Here at Outdoors Magic, over the last year or so, we've had a kind of inkling from Gore, the company behind Gore-Tex Fabrics, that something big was on the horizon. For years now, they've talked about behind-the-scenes work to produce a fabric with a lower carbon footprint. And well, it's now here, and we've got the full lowdown on it for you. So, there's a new fabric from Gore on the block, and it's made from something called EPE, which stands for expanded polyethylene. Now, unlike previous Gore-Tex fabrics, this stuff is made using a non-fluorinated, aka PFC-free process. In other words, there are no eco-hazardous chemicals present here, but it's also apparently been designed to help to reduce Gore's carbon footprint. Anyway, enough from me. It's time to bring someone from Gore in to talk us through this. I've got Ross McLean here. He's the sustainability leader at Gore. Ross, thanks very much for joining me. This is huge news for Gore, right? Absolutely huge, huge news. Um, as part of our commitment to responsible performance, introducing an entirely new material platform into our product into our product range is, is huge for us, uh, based on expanded polyethylene, but a, a, a big announcement from us. And what prompted the company in the first place to, to want to create this? As a, as a material science company, we're always looking for new. We're always looking and evaluating materials and what they do and, and how we can use them. So we've been, we've, we've been searching for different things for a long period of time. We are guided by durability and performance. So making sure we make high-performing, long-lasting long -lasting garments, long-lasting footwear, long-lasting gloves and accessories that... that allow end users to do what, what they love in the outdoors. So that, that's our guiding light. And we look for materials that, that do that. And we always have done and always will do. Uh, some different pressures around in, in the world at the moment. Back in 2017, we introduced uh, our commitment to remove what we call PFCs of environmental concern from our products, um, from the entire life cycle of our consumer products. So that's an additional lens here. So we've been looking for materials to to deliver durable performance, but also allow us to, to hit some of those goals around removing PFCs of environmental concerns. So we're really, really happy, really excited about the combination of properties that we've got here, uh, advances our goals of uh, eliminating PFCs of environmental concern, but also, uh, for example, allow us to, to improve our carbon footprint. This material has an exceptional, a really exceptional uh, strength to weight ratio. So you can make very, very strong, very lightweight membranes. And that, uh, that itself, coupled with the, the actual lower footprint of the material, we can, use, we can use less stuff due to this high strength, uh, strength material, and it has a lower footprint inherently. So those two things combined mean we can lower our carbon footprint reasonably significantly as measured by the, the MSI system in this case. Does that mean then that it's kind of got the same longevity or lifespan as previous Gore-Tex membranes then? Uh, ab absolutely. Consumers can expect what they expect from a Gore-Tex product. So long life, durable, waterproof, breathable apparel that they, that they can do their activities in. So that's exactly what consumers can, can expect. It comes with our guarantee to keep you dry promise. Uh, so uh, again, exactly what consumers expect. And our target here is to produce long life products with this new platform. We recognize that the best way, one of the best ways to lower environmental footprint is to produce a product that can be used for many, many years. And that's absolutely guides us because then you don't need to remake that product, something that's in your wardrobe for a long time. Um, and so that's absolutely what we're aiming to do with this new material as well. Okay. And microporous polyethylene, isn't a new material, is it? It's been used in film, grocery bags, wire insulation, all kinds of stuff. So what have Gore done here to make it suitable for wet weather systems? Absolutely right. So it, it's not a material that we've, that we've just invented. It's been around for, for a long time, but we have some really unique capabilities. We've been making for more than 40 years thin, lightweight, highly breathable membranes for W, for, windproof, waterproof, breathable applications. And through that time, we've, we've learned quite a few things about how to do that, how to manipulate materials, how to manipulate polymers. Most of that based on our, our historical use of, of PTFE and EPTFE. But we've taken that knowledge and brought that to bear on this entirely new material set. So choosing, optimizing the, the makeup of, our, of the, the polyethylene itself, and then 
figuring out the right way to process it, the right way in particular to expand it, to create that micropore structure that allows us to make very thin but very strong uh, membranes. We then add some uh, an additional polyurethane coating in, um, into the membrane as well and bring all that together to make highly breathable, highly durable, waterproof membranes. So it, it, it allows us to leverage all that knowledge we've built up over 40 plus years of, of doing what we do and creating apparel and footwear out of those, those membranes. Can you give me a, a specific example of, of some of the field testing that's gone on then? Sure. So I, I went downstairs earlier and I'm, I'm really fortunate. I'm not sure if this will come across in the video. I have, I have one of the very original EPE uh, garments here. I'm sure that doesn't come across very well. So we, we work uh, clearly at lab scale and you know, starting to test materials, but fairly quickly we make things like, like that. We make garments and start to wear them and, and put them on people. To start with, that's just people like me, keen outdoor enthusiasts within Gore to sort of kick them around and see are, are we in a, about right. But that's just us playing around really to see, you know, have we got something that's interesting? Lab testing with some fairly crude work um, in, in terms of garments. We then turn that, and this is the unique thing about Gore and the, and the way we use science to, to really understand things. We take that and build statistically robust field trials then. We have a groups of testers around the world in different places that we've built up over many years. And we can give, create garments, give them to um, garments or footwear, give them to these testers and let them do what they, what they do through reasonably repeatable cycles. And we have a, a whole host of, of data we can compare and we know what we're looking for. So uh, um, in my, my home country, Scotland, we do a lot of testing. It, it's wet and wild in many places, but we have certain, certain locations around the world. And sort of, if you like, set protocols that can go for many months and sometimes years to really understand the material. Uh, in many places, our testers don't know what they're testing. So if you tell them, here's the latest and greatest thing, the, you know, the best thing we've ever made, then you're going to get positive feedback, just, just bias that you get. So I always smile when I see athlete recommendations for, for a particular new material from, from either us or, or in, in lots of places, competitors, where there's, you know, the, there's a buzzword, you know, a line of, uh, um, that's exactly the opposite of what we do. We go through rigorous, rigorous, statistically controlled testing, build data sets, which make us feel really confident that we know how this material performs. It meets what we call durable materials. It's going to give the protection that end users want and demand and, and rely on for us. So yeah, lots and lots of field trialing, but it's, it's robust science-based and building knowledge upon knowledge upon knowledge. And that, that's what we do at Gore. So at the moment, I think it's going to be, the fabric is going to complement the existing fabrics from Gore that are currently already in its, in its armory. In five years time or, or three years time, are we going to be seeing this membrane replacing the existing fabrics? So replacing Gore-Tex Pro, Gore-Tex Shake Dry um, and standard Gore-Tex? So at, at the beginning, I, I used the word complementary material. At the moment, we're introducing this as a complementary material into a selection of specific end uses, what we would call general outdoor, so not pinnacle of the mountain at the moment, but general outdoor type uh, end uses, lifestyle garments, and footwear. This is going into footwear immediately as well, snow sports gloves. So we're, we're starting in some specific areas for good reasons, based on the knowledge we have on the material and the, and the confidence we have, and we want to get this out as quickly as possible. We are... Um, we fully intend to expand this over time and, and start to put it in more and more end uses. Will they look exactly, is it going to be a one-to-one -one replacement? I, I don't know. We, we haven't quite figured some of that out at the time. But what I can tell you is it's going to be driven by performance. I've just talked through field trialing. Once we're really confident it works for a particular end use, because a high, a high mount, a mountaineering field trial is different from a, you know, a, a more... Um, general outdoor focus field trial. So when we're really confident that the material does absolutely what it, what it needs to do, where it needs to, then yes, our intention is absolutely to, to expand this, uh, this material set in many, many places. I'm not going to speculate now as to exactly where and when, but, but yes, we're moving as quickly as we can. 
Okay. And I think I'm right in thinking that Gore have announced that they're aiming to cut carbon emissions by 35% by 2030. So how big a step is, is, um, is this new fa fabric towards, towards that target? It's a great question. So we, we have a couple of different goals. So the 35% is, is our scope three emissions. So I know this gets complicated, but that's essentially the emissions of things that we buy. Um, what, what Gore, the, the, our facilities and our business, we're committed to a 60% reduction in what's, what we call scope, what, what is scope one and two emissions. So that's the kind of footprint of our facilities and energy we buy for those facilities, for example. So across, the, across both of those, um, this new membrane is an important part, but it's only one part. We have lots to do around moving, continuing to move towards uh, renewable energy, for example, in our facilities, but that we're, we're well down that road. More importantly is what happens in our supply chain, and in particular textile supply chains. So we, we bring textiles in from, from other companies and then add them to, to our membranes. And that's the bit that's really important So um, to, for us to focus on. So EPE absolutely moves us forward towards our goals, but it, it's not the whole story. And we, we're actively working with our suppliers and in particular collaborating with the, the wider industry um, to, to try and lower footprint of the, of the whole textile supply chain. All very interesting news indeed then. Ross, thanks very much for coming on. Can't wait to see this stuff out there now. Great, thank you very much for having me. And uh, yeah, we're really excited to, to see this fly in the market. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. A bit different to the normal stuff here on Willsville, but as you'll probably have gathered, it's big news that could really help the outdoor industry become a lot greener over the next few years. On that note, I've stuck a link down below for our Green Gear Guide 2022, which we just published on our site. There's a lot of very good sustainable outdoor innovations to delve into there. All that's left for me to say is thank you very much for watching. Catch you next time.